Today, I'm going to talk about our investigations on quantum simulations of the lithium superoxide dimer rearrangement. This work was done in collaboration with Mitsubishi Chemicals and KA University. First, I will talk about some early IBM progress on quantum computing for chemistry. Then I'll talk about work that we've done in collaboration with our partners on electrochemistry applications. Then I will launch into the technical discussion. IBM's early efforts in quantum computing for chemistry are shown here. In 2017, IBM published a report in Nature magazine, which demonstrated for the first time that a physical quantum device had been made under experimental conditions and that the device could be used to run quantum simulations on chemical systems. Researchers performed simulations on the association of various hydrides, such as hydrogen, lithium hydride, and beryllium hydride on a seven qubit device. They show that while the simulations could predict the dissociation of hydrogen almost exactly, there's a lot of scatter in the dissociation profile for beryllium hydride. And most notably, there's a very pronounced bump in the intermediate region for the dissociation of lithium hydride. About a year later, IBM demonstrated that results involving lithium hydride could be improved by up to an order of magnitude by implementing an error mitigation protocol. In this case, they showed that by stretching the microwave pulses used to control the device at a constant factor, they could apply a Richardson extrapolation technique to correct the noise measured in these simulations. Now let's talk about the various types of applications that can be investigated with computational chemistry techniques. First, it's important to recognize that computational chemistry spans diverse length scales and time scales from quantum chemistry in which researchers are trying to model atomic interactions as accurately as possible using the Schrodinger equation, to lattice models in which we investigate the electronic structure of surfaces or investigate interactions of substrates with the surfaces using techniques such as the Hubbard model. To molecular dynamics in which we try to determine how small molecules, peptides, polymers, solvents, and so on, move around and interact with each other. These are dependent on Newton's equation of motion. These contrast with Mesa scale and continuum model simulations that are dependent on engineering considerations rather than, say, physical or chemical concepts. I'll provide a few more details on quantum mechanics, which utilizes the Schrodinger equation and is believed to be the nearest term application of quantum computing. Various methods may be employed for quantum mechanical calculations ab initio or electronic structure methods, DFT methods, semi-empirical methods. Each of these is used extensively for different applications. Electronic structure methods so solve the electronic Schrodinger equation given the positions of the nuclei and the number of electrons. There are a number of examples, such as those shown here, involving coupled cluster methods. In principle, one can systematically improve the methods by going from hard chief off and adding on successive improvements of electron correlation to arrive at the exact or full CI limit. DFT methods are also used extensively. They utilize functionals of the electron density to arrive at an approximate treatment of the correlated motions of electrons beyond Hartree-Fock. Some empirical methods are based on Hartree-Fock, but makes many approximations and obtains some parameters from empirical data. I've highlighted the electronic structure methods because this is currently the focus for IBM, mainly due to the fact that methods can be systematically improved to full CI, unlike DFT, for example. Here are various industrial sectors of chemistry that we at IBM believe there is potential for the development of quantum computing applications in the long term. These are the energy, petrochemicals, and pharmaceutical sectors. The main challenge for all these sectors is accurate simulations of chemical species, which often, especially in electrochemical systems, possess exotic electronic structure, which may not be well treated by methods in popular use today, such as single terminal DFT wave functions. We believe that high accuracy multi-reference methods are more appropriate, but these are often too computationally intractable for interesting industrial chemi chemical use cases. Now I'll provide a brief overview of the types of investigations that IBM has undertaken with partners on electrochemical systems. We've collaborated with Mitsubishi Chemicals and K University to demonstrate the use of an active space to investigate the reaction mechanism for a rearrangement process that has been proposed to occur in lithium air batteries. 
This process would normally require many qubits. In this case, we reduce the number of qubits required from four to six to just two by focusing on the active space for the reaction. And this is the focus of today's talk. We've also worked with Daimler, Mercedes, Benz on various types of batteries. We've shown how to compute ground state density matrices and dipole moment variational quantum algorithms on chemical species that may be generated in a lithium sulfur battery. We've also shown how to deploy quantum machine learning to assist classical DFT methods to study disordered crystalline materials used in lithium ion batteries. Let's talk some more about lithium air batteries. There is of course a general societal impetus to be less dependent on fossil fuels from a sustainability standpoint. In addition, our energy usage is increasing all the time and we're greatly motivated to investigate alternative energy sources. We, have already, we already have lithium ion batteries that are ubiquitous in our cars, phones, and many other devices. From a theoretical standpoint, lithium air batteries possess approximately 10 times higher energy density than lithium ion batteries and possess energy density compared to petrol. The lithium air battery operates in the following way. During charge, lithium peroxide converts into molecular oxygen and lithium ions plate the lithium anode. During discharge, molecular oxygen combines with lithium ion formed from the lithium anode to initially form lithium superoxide and eventually lithium peroxide at the cathode. In today's presentation, I will describe how to model one portion of the discharge process involving the formation of lithium peroxide from lithium superoxide. The intermediate steps that occur during battery operation in which exotic radical species are being generated limit the performance of these batteries. And this is where quantum simulations could play a role in, in understanding these processes. Classical calculations have previously been performed on the mechanism for lithium peroxide formation during discharge. The reaction profile shown here was obtained from a procedure in which geometries were first optimized with unrestricted MP2 method with, with a large basis set. And single point calculations were performed on these geometries with unrestricted CCSD parentheses T calculations at a complete basis set level. The mechanism involves dimerization of lithium superoxide to form a caged dimer, which in turn rearranges to form a li linear dimer that then disproportionates into lithium peroxide and oxygen. It was observed that the barrier is approximately 20 millihartries. The methodology that we've used for investigations on quantum simulators and devices is as follows. Classical pre-computations were performed with the PI-CF software by optimizing geometries with the unrestricted B3-LIP DFT method, including dispersion and utilizing a fairly large basis set. Calculations were performed on quantum simulators by using the state vector simulator, beginning from the hartree fock initial state with a large basis set. These simulations utilize the VQE algorithm with the SLSQP optimizer and various variational forms. After determining the most efficient onsets from work on simulators, that onsets was used on the IBM Q Almaden and IBM Q Johannesburg devices, which are both 20 qubit devices. Almost everything remained the same for simulations on devices, except that we use the SPSA optimizer, which is stochastic and thus more suitable for use on hardware, and we used our mitigation techniques. One of the factors that we're very concerned with is how many qubits are required for calculations being performed on devices, especially given that 46 qubits would normally be required to study lithium superoxide dimer rearrangement. First, let's talk about how we determine the number of qubits. This has to do with some chemistry theory and how we map orbitals used to describe a molecule to qubits. We recognize that molecular orbitals are comprised of atomic orbitals, like we show here for the hydrogen molecule, in which two hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals combine to give a bonding spatial orbital and an anti-bonding spatial orbital. These two spatial orbitals are comprised of four spin orbitals, each of which maps onto a qubit. In other words, one spin orbital maps to one qubit. We can perform this analysis, analysis for other elements of the periodic table. As shown here, each element in period one has one atomic orbital that we need to account for. 
These comprise two spin orbitals and are thus mapped to two qubits. Each element in period two has five atomic orbitals, which will be mapped to 10 qubits and so on. So for the six period two atoms involved in lithium superoxide dimer rearrangement process, 60 qubits would be required for the full set of orbitals. We typically freeze the core orbitals for atoms, so that number would be reduced to 48. We can also do a further reduction by two based on using a spin parity qubit mapping scheme to get to 46 qubits. Clearly, we need other strategies to reduce the number of qubits required for this process. Let's talk briefly about strategies to reduce the number of qubits required for simulations. The scenario on the left shows what would happen if we didn't have to worry about qubit reduction strategies. That is, all of the core valence and virtual orbitals are used, and thus 60 qubits would be required for the lithium superoxide dimer array arrangement. One popular strategy that is commonly used in classical quantum chemistry is to focus on an active space in which we treat the valence and some or all of the virtual orbitals completely with some method, for example, a highly accurate schema, while the rest of the orbitals are treated at a lower level as, example, as exemplified by the scenario shown in the middle. In this scenario in which the core is frozen, the lithium superoxide dimer rearrangement requires 46 qubits. One could, of course, perform appropriate adjustments on the active space so that fewer or more judiciously chosen val valence and virtual orbitals are used to represent the chemical phenomenon or interaction of interest as shown in the panel on the right. This is a strategy that we've used for this problem so that fewer than 46 qubits are being used. Now I'll talk more about our investigations and I'll begin with the classical pre-computations. These are the geometries that were, that were obtained from calculations in, on, involving unrestricted B3 lip with D3. These are very similar to the published geometries that I spoke about earlier that were found with unrestricted MP2, except for the TS, which is slightly different. The two singly bonded oxygen atoms shown at the bottom of the reactant twist and realign in the TS to form the bridge shown in the product. One possible reason is that the potential energy surface around the TS is very flat and many transition states are possible in that region. <clears throat> we want to investigate the dependence of the orbitals included in the active space on the accuracy of our predictions. So we perform calculations with various active spaces using full CI and compared these with hartree fock using the full set of orbitals. Without correlation, hartree fock significantly overestimates the energy of the reactant and overestimates the energy of the transition state and product to a lesser degree. The use of the homo lumo active space with FOSI restores correlation to the reactant, but hardly affects the energies of the transition state or product. You will see later on that an active space comprising the homo minus six and lumo are more appropriate for describing the TS and product. The use of an active space comprising homo minus six, homo lumo shown on the right, with full CI, it provides energies that are almost identical to that of the full orbital active space. And the barrier is approximately 20 millihartries, which is similar to the previously published result. Note that this active space includes contributions of the atoms of bonding atomic orbitals localized on the oxygen atoms that eventually form molecular oxygen according to our mechanistic model. Calculations were performed on quantum simulators with various onsets and active spaces to determine the most suitable onsets for calculations that we would like to perform on devices. The energies predicted from calculations involving post CA, QUCCSD, and the hardware efficient heuristic onsets ROI, RYRZ, and swap RZ using the SP, SLSQP optimizer are almost identical, irrespective of active space. I just want to remind you that the three orbital active space predicts results that are in line with a full set of orbitals from previous calculations. Overall, our way is more efficient than the other heuristic onsets. We next turn to device simulations, which comprise the use of the HOMA LUMA active space for the reactant and the HOMA minus six LUMO active space for the transition state and product. This is based on analysis of the dominant configurations obtained from a full CI calculation performed on the 16 molecular orbital Homo minus seven to Luma plus seven active space. All of the results involve the use of the RY onsets combined with the SPSA optimizer on devices in line with the results obtained from quantum simulators and include readout air migration. 
we observe the following. Our way with the state, ve state vector optimizer agrees with full CA and consequently performs much better than Hartree Fock in which correlation is uh, absent. Deviations from exact results were observed on noisy devices. The IBM Q Armadon device overestimates energies of the transition state and product by 10 and 12 millihartree respectively. The IBM Q Johannesburg device slightly overestimates the transition state energy by three millihartrees and underestimates the energy of the product by six millihartrees. Overall, quite accurate results were obtained on the IBM Q Johannesburg device, the barrier of 25 millihartrees, which is on par with previously published values. What can we do to improve these results? We have tracked the overlap of the ground and excited states of each of the stationary points throughout the course of the optimization. We observed that the overlap between the ground and excited states of the transition state and product shown in panels A and B start with a small amount of overlap, and then they diverge through the course of the optimization until there's no overlap at the end of the optimization process. However, as shown in panel C, the reactant starts off being highly mixed but the ground state overlap shows no support separation whatsoever from excited states over the course of the optimization. In fact, the second excited state is significant at the start, but diminishes as the first excited state grows in, and we end up with an almost 50-50 mixture of the ground state and the first excited state at the end. It should be pointed out that this behavior is different when noise is not present. There's very little overlap of the ground state and excited states on the state vector simulator with no noise as shown in panel D. Given these results, showing the highly mixed quantum state of the reactant, we examine the use of an alternative error mitigation approach involving the use of quantum tomography to purify the quantum state of the reactant and compare it with a readout error mitigation. As you can see, in comparison to Hartree Fock, we arrive at a mixed state which is 77 million Hartree more stable than Hartree Fock, but is nowhere near the exact value. Readout error mitigation improves this value to 112 millihartries, which is within four millihartries of the exact result. The use of quantum tomography to purify the quantum states improves results by another two millihartries to, to the point at which the energy approaches chemical accuracy. Thank you for listening. If you have further qu questions or would like clarifications, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.